In this video, I'll show you how to change colors using the HSL panel within Affinity Photo. If you enjoy this video or find it useful, then please like and subscribe. Here we have a very nice picture of a girl in a stunning blue dress. What I'd like to do is change this dress color from a light cyan blue into something else. The easiest way to achieve this is with the HSL tool. So we go down to the adjustments icon here and from the list choose HSL. And up pops the HSL adjustment panel. Now HSL stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminosity. Here we can change the Hue, Saturation and Luminosity of selected colours or all of the colours in the image. Here on the tool we have seven buttons. The first button represents all of the colours within the image, the whole of the colour wheel here. The next six buttons represent pre-selected ranges of colours. So we have reds here, then we have the yellow range, and then we have the greens, the cyans, the blues and the magentas. The six colour ranges representing the whole colour wheel. Let's have a look. Let's select the button representing all of the colours. Now if we move the hue slider and take a look at the image, it changes all of the colours at the same time. And the same with the saturation shift slider, it will change the global saturation. And also the same with the luminosity. Shifting the luminosity slider here will cause all of the colours to become lighter or darker. The power of this tool comes from the fact that we can select colour ranges. So if we select this button here, which represents the cyan range of colours, the closest colour to the actual colour of the dress, and move the hue shift slider, the colour of the dress changes. Brilliant! But we can go one better than that, we can set ranges so that we can pick the exact range of colours of the dress. With our cyan button selected, if we click on picker and then pick a colour within the dress, if you just watch up here, you'll see the colour range move so that the centre of the colour range is the exact colour we picked. So if I click on the dress now, the colour range changed, so now the centre of the colour range is the exact colour we picked on the dress. Now, I didn't actually have to use the cyan button to pick the cyan colour from the dress. You can use any of the buttons apart from the global, so any of the right six buttons here can be assigned any colour using the picker. I think it makes it easier when you're editing to pick a button of the colour that is closer to the colour you want to change. Now the next thing I want to do is just to make sure that the colour range that I've selected is just the dress and not any of this blue down here in the background or any green that may be in the picture. And the easiest way to do this is just to desaturate, bring the saturation all the way down. Now our colour range, all the colours we have selected are black and white and this makes it very easy to see your selected colour range. And here I can see already I've got a pretty good range selected. But just to make sure, first I'm going to reduce the fall off. This is the main range here, in between the centre two points. And between these two points and these two points is the fall off, where the selection becomes less and less until nothing of the colour is selected. If I bring in the range on both sides, that will give me a very small fall off. Then, once I've reduced my fall off, all I have to do is move the range. If I grab just at the side of the two dots representing the fall off here, and move around into the blue, you can see that the blue in the background just here has become desaturated. It's become black and white along with the dress. What I want to do now is to bring this back as far as possible, just bring it back all the way down until I see that the dress here is starting to get some colour back in it. Now that means I've gone too far, I don't have enough selected, so all I have to do is re-increase the range until there is no colour in the dress. 
As we can see, there is now no blue in the dress, but there is blue in the background. Now we know the colour range we have selected only spans the dress. Now there's not much green in the image, maybe a little bit in the eye, but we'll do the same on the side of the green to make sure. Then I'll move the range back into the centre like so, and as we can see, there's some colour just starting to appear here. So I know I've gone too far, so I'll bring it back out just a bit until there is no colour at all in the dress. There we go. Now I know that the colour range that I have selected is just the dress and not the skin or the background. OK, I'll double click on the handle of the saturation slider to reset the saturation back to default. So now we have the colour back in our dress and now I'm ready to change its colour. Now like magic, if I move the hue slider up and down, the dress cycles through all of the colours. The dress is becoming all of the colours of the rainbow. All we have to do now is to decide on a colour. Magenta looks nice, but I think I'll go for more of a green. OK, so now we have a nice pretty green dress. We can not only change the hue of the dress, change the colour, with our range, we can also change the saturation and the lightness or brightness. If we want to make this a nice dark green dress, then we just bring down the luminosity like so. We could even make it extremely dark. Now notice, when you bring down the luminance, it also desaturates. That's just a side effect of altering the luminosity. The same also happens when you increase the lightness. Anyway, I think we'll go for a really nice dark green dress, though I would like it to be more intense green than that, so to compensate, I'll bring up the saturation. OK, don't go mad, that's a bit too much. I think about there. There we go, that looks great. A really nice deep green dress. OK, so that's the dress done. It looks really nice. Next, I think it would be good to change the colour of the background. I'd like to remove the blue tint. The easiest way to do this is to select our blue here. Now remember, we could select any of the others, well, apart from the one we used to change the dress colour. But we'll select blue as it's the closest. And then we'll use the picker to find the colour, about here, I think. I'll just click on this little bit of blue here, and that selects our blue range. Now, if we hold shift and move our mouse across, pressing the left button, moving across the blue section, it actually selected all of the blue that we passed through, all of the shades of blue within this area here. So holding shift whilst pressing the left button and moving the mouse selects a range of colors. And if we hold alt whilst pressing the left button and moving the mouse across our image, it will deselect the colors that it passes. So I'll just hold shift and my mouse button, move across the scene to select all the blues. And then I'll just desaturate, like so. And as you can see straight away, the background has become black and white. I'll just shrink down my handle and move it in until I start getting some blue back into the image here. There's some just appeared. Move it back out until the blue has gone. Just making sure that I only have the colour range selected at one, just the blues. Again, shrink down the fall off handle here at the top in the blue side. And right away, I can see some blue has come back. So I'll just move my handles back out until it's all gone. Now we seem to be getting just a tad of green from somewhere. Let's just make sure that's really desaturated. There we go, let's just move that around. I was getting just a tad of purple here. Just one last little tweak here, and we're done. Now, only the background is monochrome, black and white, so we know we have only the background selected. Brilliant. And the first thing I'm going to do is to bring down the luminosity, like so, and that will give her a more defined shadow here. I think that looks pretty effective. And there we go, we've changed the colour of the dress and the background using just two colour slots in the HSL tool. Last but not least, I think we'll just have a play around with the skin colour. 
Her skin is ready orange, closest is red, so I'll pick the red slot here. Use the picker to sample the skin colour, I think about here will do. Desaturate. Now all of the skin colours and the hue of her hair, which is the same, has become black and white. I'll shrink the fall off on both sides, like so. Move the handles on one side in until we start to see some colour. There we go, a little bit of colour coming into the edges, so move it back out until all of the colour has disappeared, which I think is about there. And then do the same with the other handles, the yellows. Move it in until we get colour in the skin. Then bring it back out until we have no colour in the skin. I think that's a pretty good selection, so we'll double click on our saturation shift. And we can now have a play with the skin colour. Ooh, so many choices. What colour shall we make her? Shall we make a green, a female Hulk? No, I think an alien with purple skin. I like Star Trek. And I think the purple skin goes absolutely great with the green dress, so... Let's just increase the saturation. That looks pretty good. I think that's a really good 70s Star Trek look. And that is how we change colours on an image using the HSL tool within Affinity Photo.